What is this? Is that... It's the kid from Earth. Come on, bind that tree. Wait, there he is. This is not a cutscene. I am actually moving Shepard. Where'd he go? Right there he is. Dream. Huh. Nightmare. More like. Liara, can I help you? I've been forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you all right? I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard? I'm Specialist... Oh. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. I was just leaving. Commander Shepard, I'm Com Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. Slow down, Specialist Trainer. You're doing fine. Thank you. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard, some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? Edie's an AI. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, E.D., and I apologize for all those times I talked about how... Mm, attractive your voice was. Anyway, shall I give you a tour? I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. In the CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. 
Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on Deck 3. I think she's claimed that room. And there you are. Still the same ship as before, it just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like to speak to you at the VidCom. Commander. Udina updated me on your meeting with the Council. Sounds like they're running scared. We did present them with a lot of unknowns. They're feeling threatened and want immediate solutions, not theories. Theories are all we've got right now. What's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Salarians. I'll bypass the Council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good, I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it, and if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device, when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the enemy. I understand. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. Okay. We got intel. Again, more stuff I'll explain in a bit. So the Normandy has been retrofitted by the Alliance. It's back under um, Alliance command. Although, I suppose this Normandy never was under Alliance command before. But it is now. And since we had to leave in a hurry, we have kind of a skeleton crew on board. And Shepard had a nightmare about the kit on Earth. I must say, I'm not really um, that much of a fan of that particular part of this game. I can understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the child symbolize all of the losses on Earth, but it, for me it just doesn't connect. I have no connection to the child. I don't know him. We've only met him once and he didn't really act all that natural either. It just feels like they're trying to force me to feel sad. And like they're trying to manipulate me, which I'm not a fan of. We have fancy new quantum entanglement communicators here. Like the one we used to talk to uh, the elusive man in Mass Effect 2, but now we have more to... Uh, talk to different people, like Hackett, which is good, I suppose, because conventional communications, which depends on the mass relays, might break down over the course of this war. This is the war room. And here we find the war terminal, and whenever we have any important people on board, they will also hang out in this area. At the moment there is nobody, but anyway. The War Terminal gives us information. Now let's just see what it says. War Assets. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effective these assets will perform in the final battle. Essentially, the main goal of this game is to collect uh, military assets which will contribute to the final battle against the Reapers. Everything you find in the game, when you get help from certain races or uh, individuals or find uh, ships or whatever, will give you assets that contribute to your total military strength. Then the Galactic, galactic Readiness Rating acts as a multiplier on that military strength. The Readiness Rating is determined uh, mainly by multiplayer. I think there's some other ways to affect it as well. I think the, the Mass Effect 3 datapad iPhone app can also be used to increase your readiness rating. 
Readiness rating starts out at 50%, and that's also the lowest value it can get. It will never drop below 50%. And if it is at 50%, then uh, that means that only half of your total military strength goes into your effective military strength. Playing multiplayer will increase the readiness rating. Not playing multiplayer means it drops at a rate of a couple of percent per day. But like I said, it will never drop below 50. It will never go higher than 100, obviously. Your effective military strength, what you have at the end of the game, determines how successful you will be at uh, trying to defeat the Reapers. Although no value will guarantee success, having a very low value will guarantee failure. I already have quite a high value, that's mainly because of my high readiness rating. I think there may also be some uh, multiplayer assets in the Alliance category, we'll see. Now all of our assets get listed here and they all get descriptions, so of course I will read those to see how we're doing and what we're collecting. So currently we only have Alliance assets because nobody else has agreed to help us yet. The Systems Alliance represents humanity's economic, political and military reach throughout the galaxy. Its naval forces are led by Admiral Stephen Hackett. And um, this is the main reason my value is so high, the N7 Special Ops Team, which you get from promoting characters in multiplayer. Normally, um, your starting value would be a lot lower, and you'd have a readiness of 50% if you haven't played the multiplayer. So, um, you wouldn't start with a value that's already higher than the minimum. You'd be around here somewhere at the beginning. But let's see what we have under the Alliance. The Alliance Engineering Corps. The Alliance Engineering Corps cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids. While the bulk of the AEC has active wartime duties, their brightest are helping build the device of Prophean origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amount of raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funding for any Alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of troops. We also have the 103rd Marine Division, the old saying, every marine is a rifleman, still holds true in the Alliance. Every marine enlistee, from clerk to sniper, goes through a period of infantry training. As a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers. Officers from notable battles, such as the Skillium Blitz and the First Contact War, run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, insisting the marines be prepared to storm any beach on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as the 103rd can be fighting in an Arctic desert one week, crawling through jungles the next. We have the Alliance First Fleet. The First Fleet was stationed near the Charon Relay when the Reapers invaded the Sol system. By the time Admiral Hackett issued the order to retreat, its size, once the largest in the Alliance Navy, had been cut by half. Commanding Admiral, Lin Commander Admiral Eans Lindholm made the painful decision to use a tenth of the fleet's remaining vessels as cover so the remainder could escape. Her gamble paid off as the third fleet limped out of the relay to rally with the rest of the Alliance forces on the run. Updated. This fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the Council during the Battle of the Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength, strength before the Reapers invaded. So if you had chosen not to rescue the Council in the first game, this war asset would be higher. So this is one of, one of the ways in which your choices will affect things, is that uh, it affects how much war assets you will have. And what effect that will have on the outcome, well, I can't really explain that now without spoiling things, so we'll talk about that after we finish the game. The Alliance Third Fleet. Stationed at Arcturus, the Third Fleet is headed by Admiral Nitesh Singh. When the Reapers came for the station, Singh had already pulled his command ship, the SSV Logan, back to an ideal firing position for its mass accelerator cannons. The Dreadnought's gun managed to slow down a destroyer before it could demolish the Third Fleet, but Singh was forced to retreat in the face of overwhelming opposition from the Reapers. Updated. This fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the Council during the Battle of the Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength before the Reapers invaded. The same story as the other one. N7 Special Ops Team. No species can remain neutral during the Reaper conflict. 
Allied forces are recruiting anyone, soldier or mercenary, smart, fast and tough enough to survive galactic war. The most experienced operatives form squads to secure objectives, evacuate civilians and battle Cerberus or the Reapers deep in enemy territory. Initially led by N7 Alliance Marines, these squads have been nicknamed the N7 Special Ops. In light of these teams' exemplary service and remarkable bravery, the Alliance has allowed this unofficial name to spread across the ranks as a sign of respect for their efforts. Like I said, when you play multiplayer, there's the possibility to uh, promote characters, which uh, resets their level back to level 1. You can only do this to characters that have reached the maximum level. And that gives you war assets. I d really didn't do this too often. Um, I, I basically stopped doing it altogether at the moment. Um, because there's really no point to it. It doesn't really gain you anything you need. Because, well, these war assets are nice, but not actually necessary. I suppose if you don't want to do everything in the, in the game, then it's nice to have these, because it'll get, uh, give you the opportunity to get a better outcome without doing all of the side quests. But since I do intend to do everything, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And in the multiplayer itself, promoting does nothing. It gives you a higher N7 rating, which means absolutely nothing. So, not really much point to it. The only reason I ever promote now is to get uh, f is when an event requires that you do it. Um, well, I'll explain more about that when we actually uh, get to showing the multiplayer. You have the Alliance Fifth Fleet. The Fifth Fleet became famous across the galaxy after spearheading Alliance forces at the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding Arcturus Station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the Alliance's second fleet to give the third and fifth a chance to escape. The fifth fleet's engineers are busy repairing its damaged vessels, grimly anticipating a return to Earth and revenge against the Reapers. And as with the first and third, it also lost a third of its vessels, protecting the Council. Diana Allers, Alliance News Network reporter Diana Allers, has been broadcasting from the Normandy, interviewing crew members and high-ranking Alliance officers to give the galaxy an insider's view of the war. So even if you don't like her, taking her aboard to Normandy will give you some points in war assets. And I think that as the game progresses and she releases more reports, this value will go up. Alliance Frigate Normandy SR2. That's us. We're worth 115 assets. Well, I don't really know what the numbers represent. <laughs> Just the relative value, I suppose. When the original SSV Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from stolen Alliance plans. Dubbed the SR2, the Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems with new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 Normandy is the highest performance frigate performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy, and possibly the fastest ship in its class. The Normandy is commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer and humanity's first spectre. Updated. To bolster the Normandy's firepower, Commander Shepard installed a Phoenix magnetic hydrodynamic cannon on the ship's undercarriage. Based on Reaper technology, the powerful weapon fires molten metal accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. Updated. Before taking on the Collectors, Commander Shepard reinforced Normandy's superstructure with Solaris armor. The protective layer of carbon nanotube sheeting can withstand temperatures that would instantly vaporize more conventional armor. Updated. The Normandy has been upgraded with cyclonic barrier technology, allowing the ship's mass effect field projectors to, ri to fire rapidly oscillating barriers to deflect rather than directly absorb kinetic shocks. These are the upgrades we performed in Mass Effect 2, which at this um, point give us some extra assets for the Normandy. Of course, the more important effect of those upgrades was the fact that we actually managed to get all of our squad mates out alive, which is much more valuable than some numbers here. Also, mineral resources. Commander Shepard uncovered a significant amount of uh, uncovered significant elemental deposits while scanning planets with the Normandy SR2. When the Alliance dry docked the Normandy, they seized all recovered elements. This material surplus has gone towards building the Prothean device discovered on Mars. Okay, so all of the scanning I did in the previous game did not go to waste. Kalisa bin Sinan Al Jalani, Westerland news reporter Kalisa bin Sinan Al Jalani, reached out recently to her viewers with a wartime plea for unity and cooperation among all galactic species. Updated. 
Her sincerity touched Extranet viewers, and donations for war relief efforts are pouring in, both to the Alliance and its alien allies. Well, I gla I'm glad she's finally good for something. And that's it for the assets we have now. This list will grow substantially over the course of the game, and of course I will read new entries as they get added, to keep you up to date. Let's continue our explorations of the Normandy. There's nothing else to find in this room at the moment, I do believe. There's a conference room here, which I'm sure will be useful at some point. And I think there's something here. Hey, a model aligned shuttle. Wasn't that one of the ship models we bought in the previous game? It is, in fact, and for whatever reason, they have been spread all over the ship, so we have to go and find them. If you didn't buy them in the previous game, obviously they don't show, show up now. So if you played, um, and if you uh, play this game first, if you didn't import, you also don't find these things. But since I did buy them, I now have to go and find them. This is actually the location where um, the lab was in the old configuration of the Normandy. Morden's lab. Wonder where Morden is. Helping the Solarians, I suppose. Fair point. This room serves no purpose except that you get some dialogue from these two guards whenever you pass here. And the CIC. The Alliance has found a new Cerberus lab on Sanctum. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. And um, Specialist Trainer is here. Samantha Trainer uh, fills many of the same roles that Kelly used to fill in the previous game. I wonder what happened to her. I mean, she was Cerberus personnel. So I wonder what they did to her when the Normandy got uh, returned to the Alliance. Same goes for Gabby and Ken, I suppose. And she just told us about um, an assignment. N7 Cerberus Lab. The Alliance has discovered a new Cerberus laboratory located on Sanctum. Investigate the lab and deal with any potential threat. Okay, so that's something we'll have to do. And let's talk to a trainer. Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. We're all in this together. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark 4. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. Okay. Yeah. You're on your own with that. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was there anything else? Wow, she takes dental hygiene seriously. How'd you end up in the military, anyway? My family didn't have money for university. When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really like the challenges of the lab. Al although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. I'm surprised you're worrying about a toothbrush. We've got bigger problems right now. Oh, believe me. Seeing the Reapers on Earth was terrifying. But I won't help anybody by bursting into tears here in the CIC, will I? Being here on the Normandy helps. If anyone in the galaxy can stop the Reapers, it's you. And if flagging your messages and managing strategic intel helps you in any way, then it's worth it. Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. It does sound interesting, I have to say. Although part of that sentence didn't really make much sense, but anyway. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. My parents were from London. They loved Earth. 
but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer, even if that freedom has its share of danger. If I recall correctly, you grew up on Mindwar. Given what happened to Earth, I don't think we can count on anywhere being safe right now. Quite true, Commander. Carry on, Specialist. I quite like, uh, Trainer. And the best thing is, you don't have to flirt with her to get her to feed your fish. Would also be pointless, because Trainer is a lesbian. She's only a romance option for Femshep. And we have a private message terminal, which, um... Like Kelly, Samantha will tell us about messages, uh, sometimes. Not as annoyingly every single time you walk past her. And there's a green blinking light to indicate if you have new messages, so it's a bit easier to tell. Let's see what we've got so far. We also have Tactical Mastery. Well, let's uh, take a look at that. For increased tactical control, bring up the power menu. This pauses the action, giving you time to evaluate the battlefield, target new enemies, and select a power. To use a power to attack an opponent, target the enemy before pausing the game, then highlight and select the power. The power will fire at the targeted enemy as you return to action. For maximum tactical effectiveness, use squad mate powers in combination with your own, hitting enemies with up to three powers at once. I've already been doing that, of course. See, advanced power use. After using a power, you must wait for it to recharge before using it again. This is called the cooldown period. When a power is in cooldown, its icon is gray. A red icon indicates that the power cannot affect the current target. Some offensive powers are guided and can be aimed to hit enemies over cover and around corners. There are other useful tools on the power menu. To use powers in real time, drag and drop them to quick fire keys in the power menu. If you have enough metagel, select first aid to revive a squad mate and to recover a portion of Shepard's health. You can also activate ammunition powers, like cryo ammo and incendiary ammo, to upgrade your weapon. like the description talks about power combinations, but they don't actually <laughs> explain that at all in the video. Issue orders to your squad mates by using the following keystrokes. Press Q or E to order a squad mate to attack, move to cover, or take a position. To order a squad mate to attack with a power, press Q or E while targeting an enemy. Z issues an order to both squad mates to open fire on the targeted enemy. And pressing C rallies the team to your position. Using Z to get focus fire on one enemy is actually quite useful. Especially on certain uh, more resilient enemies. Although, uh, against certain enemies, it's also a good way to get your squad mates killed. Let's check the messages. Special Ops, from Stephen Hackett. Shepard, Alliance forces are stretched thin across the galaxy. We need your specific talent for a series of Ops. These missions will open doors for the Alliance in places we can't touch through conventional means. We'll deploy operatives to hold after you've completed your objectives. I need you to head to a Cerberus lab on the planet Sanctum. I'll brief you when you're inbound. Hack it. Okay, so that's the mission trainer just told us about. And these missions are always uh, related to um, multiplayer maps or uh, locations. So basically the idea is that Shepard goes in um, cleans out these places, and then afterwards they send in different squads to hold them, which are the, the multiplayer squads. It also gives you an opportunity to uh, review some of the... or to visit some of the multiplayer locations in the single-player game. 
Although obviously multiplayer locations that were added in downloadable comp content later do not appear in the single player game. Reinstatement from Stephen Hackett. Commander Shepard, this letter formally acknowledges your reinstatement into the Alliance Navy per Admiral David Anderson's recent verbal communication. Under Emergency War Powers Regulation 903.5, you are hereby authorized to assume command of the Normandy SR-2. You are directed to begin interdiction operations against any and all enemies posing a threat to Earth, its colonies, and its allies. Furthermore, you are granted diplomatic authority to establish treaties with non-human races as required to support your mission. Sincerely, Admiral Stephen Hackett. Emergency flash traffic urgent from Alliance Fleet Operations. Flash, 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 x 134 all Alliance military personnel, this is a galaxy-wide alert for human territories. Fleet Admiral Hackett has declared threat condition Sabre 1. Enemy presence confirmed in Sol system. Earth under Reaper attack. All Alliance military personnel are directed to evacuate Sol system at first available opportunity. Do not attempt Earth approach. Heavy enemy resistance reported. Repeat, do not attempt Earth approach. Further instructions to follow on coded channel Crimson Tacit. Earth-based Alliance personnel unable to evacuate are directed to commence any and all necessary countermeasures. All remaining Alliance personnel outside Seoul Theater are directed to muster pre at pre-appointed staging areas and commence offensive combat operations at first available opportunity. In absence of further instruction, independent action is authorized. Next up is the Argus Rifle from ED. The Argus Rifle received more positive ratings than other, any other assault rifle in polls of law enforcement agencies. I have reviewed the statistical data collected by these agencies and believe their recommendations to be sound. A shipment of Argus Rifles have been delivered to the weapons locker should you wish to test them for yourself. ED. Um, like I said, we, I got this rifle because I pre-ordered the game as a bonus. Ooh, more stuff about the Quarian Fleet. ANN Alert. New article, Quarian Fleet. From Alliance News Network Information Partners by Roxius Rilius, that's a nice name, ANN contributor. Citadel. Where is the Quarian fleet? The latest intelligence shows that the Reapers are taking system after system at a feverish pace. Members of all races are fleeing their stations, colonies, and in some cases their home worlds. This kind of forced exodus might seem especially familiar to the nomadic Quarians, who were pushed off their homeworld by the synthetic Geth centuries ago. But as the galaxy pushes back against the Reapers, the Quarians are conspicuously absent. Turian and Alliance spokespeople cannot provide the fleet's current location. They say they have other concerns at the moment. Whatever the Quarians are up to, they want it kept secret from the Council. After a fueling stop at Ilium, the fleet left no stated destination. And there are also reports of a galaxy-wide call for all young adult Quarians to abandon their pilgrimages to rejoin the fleet. Greedy and short-sighted powers will always try to gain the upper hand in times of galactic crisis. We can only hope that whatever the Quarians are planning does not interfere with the only thing that should matter, stopping the Reapers. Read Roxius Rilius' regular column, View of the Empire, exclusively on ANN. Okay. N7 Special Ops Team. Shepard, we're getting reinforcements, a group the recruits are calling N7 Special Ops. They're soldiers, mercenaries, and other operatives, and they've been surprisingly effective against the Reapers with Alliance support. They're not technically N7, but I'm willing to let the nickname slide so long as it remains unofficial. They fought through some of the toughest battles in this war, and I'm not going to begrudge them the morale boost. With the whole galaxy at war, I've ordered the Ops to, f to the front lines to rendezvous with our forces. They'll provide invaluable support on the ground. Hackett. This is once again referring to multiplayer squads. You have an upgrade waiting from Glyph. Who the hell is Glyph? Dear Commander Shepard, some of the data you found allowed me to research an upgrade for you. Simply, simply access the terminal in Dr. Tassoni's office at your convenience and you may choose how and when to implement it. Have a pleasant day, Glyph. Well, I don't know who Glyph is, but Dr. Tassoni's office, Liara's room, is on deck three. Uh, that's what Trainer told us before. 
Priority mission, Eden Prime, from Alliance Command. Commander, Cerberus has attacked Eden Prime and is now occupying the colony. Alliance forces are stretched too thin right now to attempt to liberate the colony, but we've been doing what we can to covertly aid local resistance. In the process, we've learned that Cerberus has uncovered a major Prophean artifact. We don't know what it is, but it appears to be the reason for the attack on the colony. We need you to infiltrate the colony and recover the artifact. This is actually the uh, From the Ashes downloadable content, which was released at the same day the game was released, to uh, much controversy, to have paid DLC on day one. It was kind of a dick move from uh, Bioware and EA. And they claim that it was re developed after the the game was finished, but considering how tightly it is integrated into the main storyline, I doubt it, to be honest. Well, anyway, I have it, and um, I will be playing it, of course. So we'll have to go back to Eden Prime, where all of this began in Mass Effect 1, with the uh, Saren and the Geth attacking Eden Prime, all the way at the beginning. We'll have to go back there, see what's going on. What Cerberus w intends to do there. And I assume, yes, we got a journal entry for that. Priority Eden Prime. Cerberus has discovered a Prophean artifact on Eden Prime. Land on the planet to recover the artifact. So we're getting more and more missions already. But we're not done with uh, exploring the Normandy yet. Interesting how the Normandy seemed to have much better lighting when it was under uh, Cerberus' command. The Normandy SR-1 had ter terrible lighting, then the SR-2 had good lighting under Cerberus, and now it's back under the Alliance and it has bad lighting. This is just Alliance policy to have uh, really dark ships. The um, airlock, which I don't think serves any purpose, but you can go into it. And up front is, of course, um, Joker. Looks like Edie's terminal is gone. So I guess we'll have to talk to her elsewhere or something. Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the Council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. They're doing everything they can. Did they at least validate our parking? Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for old time's sake. I never did that! That's something you can do in Mass Effect 1, but I never did. So it's kind of a weird reference. Commander? Looks like Joker has nothing else to say. And since it doesn't look like we can talk to Edie here... I guess we're done with this deck. And the Normandy has actually more decks than it did in the previous game. Well, it has the same number of decks, but now we can actually get to the shuttle bay. Which we couldn't in the previous game. Um, the descriptions here no longer point out who is where, and that's because people actually move around. And you can use the map to see where they're currently located. This is one of the things I like, is that not everybody is just stuck in their own little island anymore. They actually move around and interact with each other now. That's is, is something I think is really well done in this game. So we can see that uh, Liara is on deck 3 in her cabin, and Dr. Chakwas is in medical, so we'll have to talk to her, of course. Engineer Adams is back! It was engineer of the SR-1 in Mass Effect 1. No sign of Canon Gabby, though. And Diana Eller has also set up shop in what appears to be Zaid's old, ro old room. And the shuttle bay is James, and someone calls Lieutenant Cortez, whom we haven't met yet. And of course there's also my cabin, and there's no one there. Not even any fish. Let's check out my cabin. No fish! What happened to them? Did they all die after uh, the Normandy was impounded? Or are they also 
waiting for us uh, to find them somewhere on the ship. Looks like the Normandy model itself is still in the case, but most of the other models are gone. We also have more space, so I assume there's more models this time around. And the one um, we found at uh, the back of the war room is um, already here as well. Let's see, other than that we have another private terminal, which I think is the same, except we can also review our squad, which currently consists only of Liara and James, because Ashley is still in the hospital! Um, okay, that's kind of a stupid thing to ask, considering I'm not actually starting a mission. And we have a bathroom, with a toilet, which we can flush. Other than that, it's kind of an understocked bathroom. I think that we had the same problem in uh, Mass Effect 2. Nothing we can do with the fish tank, as long as there's no fish in it. And it seems like most of our other goodies from the previous game are gone as well. Or like the artifact, or our dog tags, or our helmet. I guess we have to build a new collection. There's not even a picture of Tali or Liara here. I guess we left in such a hurry, there was no time to get such personal effects in this time. And we can still turn on music here. Wait, is that it? No, it seems to cycle between on and off. But also different tunes. Okay, of course there's an armor locker, which we can use to change our casual outfit and our armor. Um, we don't have the Cerberus outfits again if anymore. We have Alliance outfits now. Snazzy, but... I actually prefer this one! Leather jacket. As for the armor, we can uh, customize it or pick different total armors, and currently uh, we have no others, so we can't pick it. We did find some other stuff. Um, we can equip a helmet, which gives a health boost, it seems. And even though it's turned off in cutscenes, I still don't really like it, so... I say screwed out. Let's see, we're gonna. Did we have any chest plates? Yes, we picked up uh, the constant fabrication chest plate, which increases shield regeneration but decreases the health boost. This, I think, uh, reduces the amount of time before your shields start regenerating, which is actually very useful, so I'll use it. No, we have no shoulders. We have the Ariaki Technologies. Gauntlets found on Mars, which increases melee damage, but I don't really use melee that often, so I don't want to sacrifice any health for that. I have nothing for legs. Change the material. It seems to get less shiny, it seems. We have a pattern. And set a color. This is kind of distinctive, I guess. Yeah, it's a bit ostentatious. I'll, I'll stick with the stripes and leave the rest black. Let's also make the lights um, orange to match. Like that. Whatever. Not here to make fashion statements. Let's see what else there is. 